What's up guys? I'm here today to bring you probably my last video of uh, Ultra League and Ultra League Premier. With Holiday Cup right around the corner, uh, not only will I be banking sets, uh, but I'm very excited to try out some new teams and some combinations. I think these, these themed Great League Cups are honestly uh, my favorite part of uh, GBL nowadays. Um, but before we get into this last team, first of all, huge shout out to my Patreon supporters. Um, yeah, uh, thank you to this ever-growing list. You guys have been absolutely awesome. Um, and I guess have a ha happy holidays. Happy holidays to everyone else as well. Um, I guess Christmas is just passed for me. If you, uh, if you are a, uh, someone who celebrates Christmas, then Merry Christmas to you as well. Um, but I think I'll get right into this video here. Oops. So this team that we have going here is a double water team. Um, Gengar in the lead. Polyrath in the uh, safe switch position and Swampert in the closing position. And the goal here is obviously Polyrath comes in, tries to bait out the grass type, um, which Swampert can't really handle too well, and try and hit back as hard with Ice Punch as possible. And maybe hopefully burn a shield. Um, if not, then just do as much damage as you can. Uh, Ice Punch does deal quite a bit of damage, but unfortunately Polyrath doesn't really, really pack enough of a punch to... Uh, to four shields in a lot of these grass situations. Have you seen this first game? I actually swapped directly to Swampert. Uh, that's not the normal. That's only if it's something that Polyrath absolutely cannot handle. So in this case, with the slow bro lead, I've almost lost right from the get-go. Um, unfortunately, slow bro and uh, some of the confusion users like Galade, slow bro, Executor cause a lot of problems for this team. But um, besides that, it, it has seemed pretty solid. In hindsight, uh, yeah, that would be something to better account for, but yeah, you can't swap Polyrath into Slowbro. Uh, Slowbro resists all of Polyrath's moves, and can hit back for super effective fast damage and charge move damage, so it's, it's worse than Gengar in this case. Uh, and the problem with this double weakness team is if you can't swap out, like for example, my Gengar has to stay, and it's pretty much a loss as well. You kind of just have to pray. Um... Yeah, there are cases you'll see me swap into Swampert in some of these games, but those are uh, few and far between for sure. In this game, I'm trying to just go straight for that Shadow Ball. I managed to take down the Slowbro, throwing as many Pokemon as possible at it. Um, unfortunately, this Charizard is able to take me down, and they have another Pokemon as well. So, yeah, these these Slowbro teams, not uh, not great to play against. Um, if I do remember correctly, this is uh, another slow, Slowbro team too. So we have a Tang Growth lead, um, and they're going to swap right to Gallade or the confusion user at least. And I swap, but really slow. Um, so what I need to do there is either swap right away and uh, try and get, uh, like, a outpace this Gallade, um, or I can stay in and throw a Shadow Punch to force a shield and then swap. Um, unfortunately, well, they don't shield because they have the Tangrowth, and this Tangrowth is going to be able to farm me all the way down. So my goal here is I'm just going to fake like I have Sludge Wave because that's the only real way I can hurt these types of Pokemon, um, which I'm not carrying. Uh, but yeah, the movesets, I'll go over those as well. I tried this uh, extensively over the, the week with Gengar with success, or middling success with uh, Sludge Bomb, with Shadow Ball, just changing it up. I, I, I couldn't really find my footing on stream, but sitting alone playing, I uh, I had a much better day. Um, despite what you're seeing out of these first sets, here we're going to see our second slow bro. So this is a double confusion user. Uh, team, uh, my team honestly has zero chance against it. I'm just going to get out of there right there. Honestly, they could have just swapped the slow bro in, um, into my Gengar and, and it probably would have been game over at that point as well. Um, but yeah, so the first two, two matches, you kind of see how you can kind of get team comped a lot of the time in Ultra League Premier. Um, this, there are definitely weaknesses in this team for sure. Um, uh, but we'll see, we'll see how this team plays out a little bit. Uh, Venusaur Lee, this is pretty good for Gengar, but nowhere near as good as you might think it is. Um, despite resisting Venusaur's moves, you're still at risk of uh, getting taken down in the two shield if you don't go for straight shadow punches. And if you don't, or and if you go for straight shadow ball, um, or if you go for straight shadow punches, then they can force shield advantage over you. They can force multiple shields on you um, if you try to farm them down. So in this case, I actually get really greedy and I let my. Um, my uh, Gengar go down, so this is not good gameplay for me. Um, but luckily, if we know anything about Swampert, he's he's pretty spammy, so he's gonna get to that move faster than um, 
faster than Venusaur can. I'm going to farm up a little bit on this Escav and throw Hydro Cannon. I know I need two Hydro Cannons. Um, but unfortunately, they're going to get to a move. I want them to throw their energy there. Sorry. Oh, sorry, not COVID, I swear. Um, but I'm going to bring in the Polyrath. And I want to farm up a little bit. Counters don't deal too much damage. Um, but I do want to remove this Escav. Unfortunately, I think I end up CMP tying there. Uh, I tried to under farm a little bit. But I do have a very good matchup here. And that is uh, Polyrath into Lapras. This matchup is so dominating. So the fact that I started with um, not as much energy as I'd like because the CMP tied was a little bit of a, a letdown. But uh, luckily, this like they need to get to a Skull Bash. Surfs aren't enough. And two dyna dynamic punches is enough to take out the Lapras. So yeah, with shields down, this is dominating. With shields up, this is still pretty dominating uh, if you start at full health as well. So that's the thing. A lot of teams aren't prepared for Polyrath. Um, this is pretty unique typing. So when Pokemon like Lapras come in, they can't hit it back hard like some other fighters. Um, like they can threaten shields off a champ, but you can't threaten a shield off Polyrath, that's for sure. So Charizard, um, it's a pretty neutral lead, but it's uh, it's honestly pretty neutral with Polyrath as well. So the goal here is to make them swap out so Swampert can finish them off in the end. Um, and I also baited out the Venusaur here. So this is how the team should be working correctly. Um, we'll see if that's enough, though, to help pull off this win. Uh, Venusaur comes in, and I'm trying to fast move Deny every time. We've got even turn moves, which is a lot of the time. Um, I'm going to let that through. I have a shield advantage now. I'm able to farm down. Um, it's really hard for Charizard to come back in on Gengar. Especially with an energy advantage. Um, but I'm going to swap right away. Because I feel like after that first Dragon Claw. Looks like they're probably going to. They're looking for back to back Dragon Claws. They don't enough for a Blast Burn. So I swapped up to Swampert. And I'm just going to go for the Hydro Cannons here. On this Machamp. So. I, this Machamp has to throw energy. Which is fine with me. And I'll probably live this. And be able to get to another Hydro Cannon. Um, and then at this point, I just need to be able to farm up enough to get to multiple charge moves on Gengar because they don't have a normal type. So um, I already have a ton of energy. I'm going to shield once because, uh, yeah, it can be a rock slide. Um, but after that, we have a little bit of lag and luckily that doesn't cost me the game. So yeah, a lot of lag today. I actually had to remove um, one of the sets. Uh, I don't like, like I always say, I don't like to remove sets in the middle because it kind of ruins... Um, the fairness of, of this like I'm not I, I don't like cherry picking sets but when I think three games in this case uh, are ruined due to lag both for me and for my opponent um, and, and disconnects then then it's just no longer worth showing you guys that set which which is really unfortunate um, it, I think it ended up being a 1-4 that I, t I took out so I still have pretty massive gains on the day um, they swapped into uh, Alolan Golem and I completely blanked that uh, Polyrath is a uh like a water type <laughs> i don't know it was really dumb but um that's what happened i swapped in in this case because they, they already have a wild charge debuff my plan is just to farm all the way down i want to get as much energy on swampert as possible uh and this matchup is very very dominating so even though polyrath goes down we're both switch locked in and i'm gonna go straight for the earthquake on this scav uh he's gonna let it through and they swap right away so i noticed their swap as well and I'm going to go for that Shadow Ball um, instead of the Shadow Punch, which is enough to take out the Escav at that point. So uh, this match is pretty comfortable, despite the fact that I honestly just completely blanked and sacrificed my Polyrath there. So it just goes to show what you can do with a Shield Advantage with either Swampert or Gengar at the end. Um, yeah, that's, I, that's what I like about this Team Cop a little bit, is that you can kind of end up closing with whatever Pokemon comes up. Gengar, fantastic closer. Um, pretty good lead, but fantastic closer. Same with Swampert, right? You just need Shields down. Um, so if you can spend a shield to train a shield a lot of times, uh, that's what you should be doing. I probably don't show it that much in these sets, but there's a, there's a lot of times when that Venusaur swaps in. Um, if you want to shield a Frenzy Plant with Polyrath, that's perfectly fine, right? Because if you can trade shields and you outpace the Ice Punch, everything is good. Let's, uh, this match we're see Krista Dude. Um, Lapras comes out, so I'm assuming that this is the, uh, Shadow Champ Lapras Snorlax line up and uh lapras swap in i'm gonna bring in polyrath for sure um i mean not much else to say even though i knew the lineup was probably snorlax in the back as well um i think the other option was potentially to keep in gengar as well just because i don't want gengar versus snorlax at the end uh 
But but I do need to win switch advantage here. Otherwise, well, I'm, I, I really, really don't want Gengar versus Snorlax, especially with the moves that I'm running. So my goal is to keep switch advantage. I'm going to let Polyrath go down. I'm going to let Gengar deal with Shadow Machamp. And then I'm going to let um, Swampert hopefully deal with Snorlax. I have a shield advantage, but that's about to go bye-bye as I unfortunately have to shield um, Machamp. I can't risk taking a... Um, a uh, rock slide so i'll go straight for the shadow ball i think their only win condition was to hope i'm baiting and i'm going to come right back out with the swampert right away so one shield shadow snorlax versus swampert honestly can kind of go either way based on energy and um and all that but i'm gonna go straight hydro cannons here i think i need uh, two hydro cannons to finish them off and i'm not sure i'm gonna outpace them to that last one it's gonna be very very close uh, unfortunately, I will need to shield, though. I will need to shield this Body Slam. Um, body Slam is superpowered. Do no damage to Gengar. It's not really scary at all, but um, on on Swampert, it's, uh, it hits really hard. And I, I really do wonder how close they were to that second Body Slam. I think this game was ex incredibly close, um, but managed to pull it out there. Uh, if I played a little bit smarter, this lineup is very good against that other lineup. I could have won a lot more cleanly. So we're going to see this uh, second match here. We have Escav in the lead, uh, pretty good lead for Gengar. Uh, it and Toxicroak, you do have to do quite a bit of um, maneuvering around. Unfortunately, what I do here is I swap into Swampert, and I swap slow again. So this is a, a bit of a theme. Um, I really should have maybe charged that Shadow Claw and thrown it first. Because in this case, I'm going to have to go two shields down. Um... Now, this is not always the worst thing. My Swampert has quite a bit of energy. And my Gengar has some energy as well. So it really depends what they have in the back. Gallade is one of the biggest threats to my team. Uh, and you can see I'm counting my moves there. So four Mud Shots uh, allows the Sympoleon to only get one extra turn through. And because of that, I'm able to get to this Earthquake, right? So this is a Mechanic's win. Uh, there's no way I would be able to uh, faint this Sympoleon there if I wasn't counting my own fast moves. So... Uh, remember it's one, four, or seven when it's a two versus three, um, fast move scenario, which is probably the most common. And then Gengar is able to close out this escav here. They really had to hope I was baiting. I think that was their only chance. Um, because I did have a Polyrath as well. So even though I went down two shields, I was able to, um, win that without using my third Pokemon. This game is against Smurfy. Shout out to, to Smurfy. Um, I think he raided me a couple streams ago. And we're going to see a Shadow Snorlax come out. I need to eliminate this thing, right? Like, Snorlax is a huge threat to uh, Gengar. I can't let this happen. And I think I misplayed this a little bit. Or no, sorry. I swap into... My bad. I missed my swap. I swapped into um, Swampert. Instead of Polyrath. Uh, this is one of the few cases I do it. Whereas if I really want my uh, fighter against Snorlax. Uh, it's a bit riskier, but luckily they don't have a grass type this time. Um, in this case, I'm really just hanging my hat on Polyrath here. I'm like hoping they don't outrage and I just want to farm up and burn some shields. Um, but they're going to come back in with Snorlax and because of this, I saw Snorlax in the lead. I saw Kingdra. I'm thinking Dragon Knight, right? Double Dragon. Um, and that also explains why they wouldn't try and swap on a loaded Polyrath. So I actually shield the body slam and i think they're about to catch so i'm very conscious about that you can see that i was already hovering hovering over the ice beam or ice punch button um and that ice punch does a ton of damage i think their one hope was that i was uh, uh to catch my move uh but as long as you stay patient uh, a lot of people are trying to catch moves recently you can um you can make sure that you you take out these guys so uh you don't get your moves caught so i'm farming up to a dy dynamic punch and then I'm going to swap it to my Gengar, who has enough energy to take down this Dragonite. So the reason farming to the Dynamic Punch is important is because Polyrath beats Snorlax and CMP, I believe. Or at least I did in this case. And I'm going to be able to uh, KO this Snorlax very, very handily uh, with that Dynamic Punch right there. So another win in this set. This is honestly today I had more success with this team than the rest of the, uh, the game stream combined. Um, but I guess that just goes to show... Uh, if you concentrate a little bit, how much, how much further you can push your, uh, push your team. Uh, in this case, I lagged a little bit. I was kind of confused about what to swap to because Polyrath is not very common and I didn't really want to match it with my own Polyrath so late. Um, but once it does build up a little bit of energy, I'm going to switch to my own Polyrath 
um, which I'm not sure is the correct play, uh, versus just staying in with, with that Gengar. But I'm going to be able to get quite a bit of energy here. I know they're going to end up taking my Polyrath very low, um, but they have a Skarmory, and Polyrath is probably my worst Pokemon versus Skarmory, so I, don't, I really don't mind it getting low enough that Skarmory can't farm it down and being able to get off that free Dynamic Punch, which is kind of a big deal. So we both have two shields, which is kind of concerning, and they're going to swap into Swampert. So this player is actually running uh, a very similar team to uh, to my own. They're running Skarmory lead instead of, um, of Gengar. And, I mean, I feel like Skarmory lead would be pretty good uh, on this team. It just is not a Pokemon that I have anywhere near enough XL candy for or a good enough candidate to uh, to try and max for Ultra League. Uh, but obviously the Skarmory Mud Boy connection is and has always been very strong. I'm counting their moves. I'm making sure to farm up as much as I can uh, and take out this uh, Swampert Hydro Cannon. And I should have another Hydro Cannon to deal with this, um, this Skarmory. So at this point, I'm feeling pretty comfortable. The Skarmory would have to be able to farm me all the way down. Um, and I just am going to shield just to guarantee this Hydro Cannon gets off. I could have also no shielded and brought in Gengar, but I figured that this was the slightly safer play. But once I got into that situation, it's pretty good. Um, so yeah, Gengar into Skarmory, not too bad, but Skarmory into Polyrath is a uh, is is pretty good. I can't understand why they why they swapped out of that lead though. So we're gonna see Obama's no lead. Uh, this is the one case where I think not the one case. One of the cases where Sludge Bomb is better than Shadow Ball. Um, I know I can take a Weather Ball. But my goal is to shield to try and bait them into shielding a little bit. So we'll see if that works. Go for the, the shadow punch over the shadow ball. Um, it's It doesn't work this time at all. So I'm just going to have to keep going for punches. Uh, this is the really risky part of it right here. I'm thinking about ca trying to catch. Um, as you can see, I, I clicked on Polyrath. But they're too fast. And I'm going to have to tank a weather ball, which Gengar can do. Um, but it's not ideal. Uh, and unfortunately, they come with their own Gengar. So I'm going to get off that shadow punch first. Um, and now this Gengar has a bit of an energy advantage against my Swampert. Um, Swampert pretty good against Gengar, but not with an energy advantage and a shield disadvantage. Um, at least I get my extra move through and I'm going to be able to shield up the Shadow Ball, I guess, correctly, um, which is very lucky for me. And even luckier for me, they bring in Blaziken to catch a Hydro Cannon, um, which I'm not really sure is that ideal because I'm going to be able to get almost all the energy back farming down that Blaziken as well. Um... So at this point, it's feeling pretty comfortable. I've got a Hydro Cannon already. They now have no shields. And no shields Gengar at this HP doesn't even meet Polyrath. I didn't really have to switch here. Um, but I did want to just make sure that my Swampert had some energy so that when it swapped back in, um, it would be able to beat Gengar to a move. So this, yeah, this Gengar had a ton of energy. Um, but I'm going to get to that Hydro Cannon before it is able to get four more Shadow Claws in and take down that Gengar. So... Uh, yet another win in this set, I believe. Was that the last one? Um, and actually, I think that was a 5-0. So, um, my rating was not very good at the beginning of this. It still isn't isn't great, but um, at the same time, I'm not really trying to push for any milestones at this time. Uh, when Holiday comes, or Holiday Cup comes around, maybe I'll um, give it a little push. But this season is so long, there's no rush to get to rank 24 or anything like that. Uh like the world first has already been done. Doombug already did it. So there's no reason for me to, to rush and um, have unfun games instead. This next game against Jersey Toof streamer as well. And we're going to see Toxicroak lead. I'm going to stay in. And a lot of people are just trying to catch moves. Uh, but I'm perfectly fine uh, building up damage and dealing tons of damage to this Toxicroak. Right? Um, just because Shadow Claw. Decent effectiveness, charges up decently fast, counter does no damage, so it's free energy for Gengar. Um, and it's honestly, honestly a trade I'll take at any time. Um, in this case, I actually um, I miscalculate. I didn't know the matchup with Shadow Snorlax wasn't quite that good. So uh, I do end up taking two body slams and going down um, and losing that matchup with Polyrath. But honestly, losing the matchup against Snorlax uh, when their lead is Toxic Croak is perfectly fine. Um, my entire team does very, very well against Toxicroak, uh, besides Polyrath, right? So if Polyrath goes down, Gengar and Swampert can um, can kind of run free. I don't really need switch advantage, and I have two shield advantage. Uh, 
And unfortunately, I see a P-Tie there, but I'm going to be able to farm down that Swampert the whole way. I have an Earthquake ready to go. I'm waiting to see what their Pokemon that comes out is. And it's an Empoleon, and I honestly should have just Earthquaked it. Um, but I got a bit nervous, and I swapped out. Actually, no, this was, a, this was better. Okay, no, this was really good. Now, looking back on it, this was a really good play. They were still switch locked because they swapped slow, and I was not switch locked. So what happened was... I needed to go right into, um, I needed to essentially spend all my energy from Gengar to take down the Sampoleon because I need to save energy for Snorlax. Okay, so actually looking back, that was pretty high level play. I didn't realize it um, as I was watching in 1.75 times speed. But um, but yeah, okay. Um, I was playing around to kind of a broken switch timer there. And not a broken, but an out of sync switch timer. And um, that's actually kind of, I think the newest advanced strategies uh video that I'm working on so I should should save this clip um, yeah so this time because I got baited last time or they didn't fall for the bait last time I've realized I'm not gonna bait versus a bomb snows anymore I really need to take them out um, they're a huge threat to my back line and something that Gengar doesn't really dominate that well either so Dragon Knight comes out, I just throw Shadow Punch, just because it deals quite enough, uh, quite a bit of damage. They're going to come up with Ampharos, so um, while this see may seem like a bit of a team building misplay here, Polyrath is weak to Electric, but Swampert dominates Electric. Um, what this really does in the mid game is draw their Ampharos, and then create a situation where my Swampert can comfortably farm all the way down. Um, now unfortunately, I see MP tie there. I'm going to elect to no shield and it's a focus blast. Um, yeah, in hindsight, shield that. The problem was I was CMP tied there and I'm going to swap right back into Gengar. And I think because of that mistake, I might actually end up losing this game. So, yeah, uh, they gave me a chance there. If I got a mud shot through, I actually very well could have won this game, but I didn't. So, uh, we're going to end up losing there, and that was a pretty big misplay by myself. I uh, I wasn't counting moves very well, and I should not have let that Afros get to Focus Blast before firing my first Hydro Cannon, and it would have been a completely different story. That was a completely one game that I decided to just throw away. So you see this uh, next game here, it's going to be Clefable. I counted 10 moves, right? That's uh, so they don't get an extra turn in, uh, which can be very important. We're going to see if they... Um, well, they're going to throw their charge move, uh, which I'm going to have to shield because I want to get this. Um, I want to get some damage out now. Uh, unfortunately, if they shield this, this Gengar is a bit too low to do anything. So I'm going to come back in with Swampert and they're going to come back in with Drift Limb. Um, I swapped to Polyrath here just because Polyrath is not very good against Clefable. So if anything, if I'm training HP on any Pokemon at this point, it, I want it to be Polyrath. Uh, I'm going to tank that Shadow Ball. I'm probably not going to shield anything on Polyrath at this point. Um, just because, like, I need to save the shield for Swampert. Like, I really need Swampert to go on an absolute tear here. And it needs to be able to beat whatever else is in the back. And, yeah, they, they do go for the bait on Icy Wind. Um, but it's just not something I was considering shielding. My goal here is to get as low as possible without letting this Drifloom get to another charge move. And I think maybe I can get to a move versus Skull Fable. But the way um, damage works, it's, it just isn't possible. Um, so in this case, this is Swampert versus a Bomb of Snow. I'm going to go for the Earthquake. It takes Earthquake and two Hydro Cannons to fate a regular Bomb of Snow. And that's something I kind of just found out in this matchup. Um, I'm going to block the Energy Ball here. And if you do the math, it's 14 turns to two Hydro Cannons. Um, and, sorry... It's not, it's four, It's 15 turns, sorry, 14 turns to three Hydro Cannons, and it's also 14 turns to two Energy Balls. Um, so because I had that Energy lead, um, that put me just a couple moves from Earthquake at the beginning, I knew I was going to outpace them to two Energy Balls, uh, and I'm able to get that KO there, and then I'm able to get that KO on Clefable, who doesn't have any energy at all. So we're able to pull out that win with Shield Advantage, it just shows how, how strong Swampert is when uh, opponent shields are down. Um, takes down a bomb snow without sludge wave and that's that's one of the main threats or main reasons i'd run sludge wave in the, in the first place so i see the dragon flying come in dragon flying 
I assumed it was Dragonite. I was ready to just Shadow Punch it, but it was an Altaria. And I really should have just went for straight for the Shadow Ball at the beginning. It's unlikely they'll shield because Altaria is so tanky. But they do shield the second Shadow Ball once it's taken a bit of chip damage, which is a misplay from my part. I'm waiting for them to throw a Sky Attack so I can safely swap into Polyrath. Yeah, so Polyrath, um, pretty good against Altaria. You've got that Ice Punch dealing four times, or, well, double super effective damage, and they're going to come back into Skarmory. So a lot of XL Pokemon on this team. Grinder right here uh, for sure. And I'm going to let Polyroth go down. I actually think I can get to another move. Sky Attack doesn't quite KO. No, I can't get to another move. Um, but it doesn't quite KO. Uh, so they get a little bit of extra energy. And then i got to think about who to go back in on. In this case, I think about the rest of their Pokemon. We're going to go in with Swampert. So now they're going to come back in with Escav. I would have swapped faster, but I really want them to spend energy before I swap out. And unfortunately, I'm locked in with this uh, Hydro Cannon already. I do have a second one, but I want my uh, Gengar to be able to farm this Escap down. And I can get off a, um, a Charge Mover 2 against this Skarmory. Yeah, we're just going to go for straight Shadow Punches because I want to burn the shield. Um, and I want to get the Skarmory low enough for a Hydro Cannon to take down. And yeah, so they're actually going to end up spending their energy. Their only win condition was if they were farming down, but they knew they weren't going to get there. And I'm already at the Hydro Cannon ready to go. Uh, Swampert beats Skarmory and CMP, so it was a it was a pretty safe game there unless I, I lagged a little bit. Um, yeah, so next game in the set, which is Timo Chan, Mexico. And we'll see how the lead looks like. Another Toxic Rogue lead. A lot of Toxicroak, um, Snorlax, Lapras teams recently. I think it's a pretty solid team as well. Um, but like I said, this team comp is pretty good against those uh, like those bulky backliners, Lapras and, and Snorlax. Um, you just love to see that kind of team comp. So uh, so you remember the Shadow Snorlax being able to take down Polyrath and two Body Slams. Uh, well, with normal, normal Snorlax, that's not the case. I'm going to be able to get another dynamic punch off here, um, which they're going to let through. And I should be able to win the race to another punch as well. Uh, so if they let this down, then I've won switch and shield advantage. Um, I'm actually going to swap because <laughs> the ice punch doesn't quite KO to Gengar. So Snorlax versus Gengar, obviously not a great matchup for Gengar, unless the Snorlax has a bunch of energy and is at very low health. Because you take no damage from the charge moves, right? Only from the fast moves. Um, at that point, I would have been able to build up a ton of energy if they hadn't swapped out right away. The reason I swapped out was because I know the other two Pokemon on their team, I assumed it was a Lapras at this point, aren't very threatening to Gengar, so I can just swap out safely. And then I can save Polyrath um, because he does have a little bit of uh, health and energy for later. Either for a Sack Swap or, or whatever people are thinking. Uh, and then Toxicroak comes back in. We're just going to go straight Shadow Punches here. Um, with Swampert, there's there's definitely enough in the back to take care of Toxicroak. And they're actually going to make a pretty good catch on a Snorlax. Although, uh, what they don't realize is I'm pretty fine with that. I, um, I want their Snorlax down. I don't want to uh, accidentally Earthquake it. And in this case, this is very safe for me. I can just go straight Earthquake and they realize that and GG out as well. But yeah, a lot of uh, Lapras Snorlax in the back. That's for sure. And we're able to take 4 out of 5 on this set as well. Um, don't remember what rating I'm at now. I think it's just over 2,600. So not the greatest, but I mean, it's Ultra League, you know. It's, it is how it goes. And we're going to take a look at this last set here of the, um, of I guess, Ultra League for me. In the next couple weeks and it's going to be gyarados lead this is a pretty tough lead um none of the pokemon really do well against it and i missed my catch so i'm gonna to have to shield the first move on gengar here um i do like to catch onto polyrath because polyrath resists both crunch and aqua tail um so against this gyarados i'm just gonna go straight shadow punches and they're actually gonna get a shield and i'm gonna swap to try and catch Unfortunately, I missed the catch, but they're still going to throw a charge move, which is absolutely ideal for me. Um, if they save this for Swampert or Gengar, would do a lot more damage instead. Um, they're going to come with Ampharos, and I accidentally let them get through a free Volt Switch. 
which is pretty game losing, but they also get the over tap and unfortunately I'm not able to get to my next move. Um, in hindsight, it might've been a good idea to burn a shield to get another shield. Um, in this case, I was counting and that was not enough to be a focus blast. So I know shielded it. I think in the future, I'll no shield if they go up enough for a focus blast. If it's just a dragon pulse, probably not. If it's a return, I'll also probably shield that. Um, but in this case, because they keep throwing thunder punches, I'm able to farm all the way down. I have so much energy. Gyarados is low enough. Like, uh, so that's the goal versus these uh, Gyarados and Dragonite leads is to get them low enough that Hydro Cannon can take them out uh, because then they're very vulnerable to Swampert. And then Machamp comes in. I'm just going to swap out right away uh, into the shieldless Machamp with my uh, Gengar and you're going to see how much damage Shadow Ball does. It just feels so good to land something like that. So we're going to grab a pretty easy win there, but I I do remember making quite a few mistakes in this last set. I was just getting tired or, or what's going on, um, but I'm still going to include it just for more gameplay regardless. Yeah, we're going to see another slow bro lead. I saw more slow bro leads today than I think the rest of GBL combined because I've lost to so many of them. Um, I'm trying out a new strategy. I want to go for that Shadow Punch and then swap to Swampert, uh, and they're going to swap right away. So Lapras... Unfortunately, I would really have loved to see this Lapras on my Polyrath instead. Um, but it is what it is. And as such, I probably won't shield anything. And it doesn't look like they went to a Skull Bash anyways. It looks like just a Surf. Um, and I'm able to get to that Earthquake. So either they're going to shield and I get shield advantage, or they're just going to let their Lapras go down, which is the latter. And unfortunately for me, um, this is why you never swap your best counter in usually. In, in solid team building because otherwise this happens. They also got a free confusion through. This game is an absolute disaster right now and they shield and yeah, that is that. Um, I still have my shields up, but this slow bro looks like it might be able to confusion down the whole team. Yeah, two sidekicks, I don't have shields anymore. Uh, and this ice punch at this point, I don't think even KOs, uh, but I'm gonna try it just cause I do need to push every limit possible to try and win this game. Yeah, and they're going to come with Togekiss. So, yeah, this game was over uh, quite, a, quite a long time ago. Uh, I think if they just brought their Togekiss straight into Polyrath, it would have been over a little bit sooner. Um, but but it is what it is. And, yeah, well played to, to my opponent. But that's probably one of the toughest unwinnable lineups to play against. Uh, we're going to see another Toxic Rogue lead here. A lot of them like to catch. So I'm just I just keep auto attacking. This guy throws. I don't mind shielding Mud Bomb on Gengar because I've gotten so much more um, energy than than they have. I'm gonna throw a Shadow Punch, which they don't shield, which is fine. But I'm gonna swap out into Polyrath, right? Um, Polyrath taking Mud Bomb is no problem. I don't. I'd have to spend a shield if we're Gengar. So uh, this way I get a bit of an energy lead on whatever comes in, and it's uh, Charizard. So throw Ice Punchers at Charizard. This matchup is not great, especially against uh, Dragon Breath Charizard, but I have a bit of an energy lead, so the goal is to take this Charizard down as low as possible. Um, hopefully force a shield, but they're counting, so they, uh, they're they not going to let me get to that third Ice Punch without throwing a move. I'm surprised they didn't Blast Burn me there, uh, but I will gladly take that shield back, and uh, this Dragonite has a ton of energy. I know I have some energy on Gengar as well, so I'm going to throw that Shadow Punch right away uh, to burn that last shield and then swap out to Swampert because I honestly thought they would throw a move. Um, so I figured that this it was not worth shielding on uh, on Swampert. Luckily, they just kept trying to bait me with Dragon Claw. Blast Burn deals a ton of damage and is definitely not a move you want to be facing up against. And they're going to bring in Lapras. So once again, I really wish I had um, my Polyrath. I end up shielding the Surf just because I want to get to an Earthquake. And I'm not sure if the Surf KOs or not. It would be very close. Uh, and in this case, I really just need this Lapras to throw energy at my... Um, at my um, Swampert. So I know Surf doesn't KO, and unless they're running Ice Beam, my Gengar is relatively safe, and I just get to a Shadow Ball, and I'm able to just throw that off right there. Uh, there's no way this Lapras can stop both my Gengar from getting to a Shadow Ball and my Swampert from getting to an Earthquake, and it just takes one more. Uh, so we're gonna win this game as well. So another one of them Toxicroak Lapras teams. The Charizard twist, I guess, last time. Uh, this is Wing Attack Charizard. Normally I would swap right away, 
but with wing attack hitting polyrath for super effective damage um and hitting gengar for regular it's probably smarter for me to stay in this time and kind of trade shields so i get that first shields uh, i'm just gonna go straight for shadow ball um this is almost certainly a dragon claw but at the same time i want to keep my gengar relatively healthy um and i don't know what i'm doing there uh i have no shields so i swap into swampert for no reason and the thing is i have two shadow punches built up on gengar i should have just thrown one of them um if not both to get their shields uh but unfortunately they don't shield at all i'm forced to throw on their shadow punch because i'm too low to to farm down there and um i really have to hope polyrath can close this out but it's a wing attack charizard like i said with a shield so this was really really poorly played by me um yeah this was yeah really poorly played if i had played this better uh this game was definitely winnable but yeah <laughs> Ugh, swapping uh catching a leaf blade with swampert is obviously never ideal play i guess with a venusaur in the back it's still very tough but once that galade comes out if i can just get rid of the galade everything does feel a little bit better yeah that would that that's a that was poorly played honestly i felt a little bit better when the venusaur came out because i knew that would be a very hard game anyways um but up until that point i was pretty upset at myself we're gonna see a skarmory lead here um this is not too bad for gengar i'm just gonna go straight for shadow ball i got baited last time right so i'm just gonna go straight for it and it gets shielded so i don't mind trading shields here i outpace the skarmory and i deal a ton more damage uh but they do try and swap and they swap into the goon so i actually charge up a little bit more but i really don't want to get hyper beamed so i i figured if someone was mad mad enough to or not mad but like crazy enough to swap into goon it might have a hyper beam as a coverage move just to deal with um, those pesky fighters. But I'm going to live that sky attack and get that dynamic punch off. And it deals quite a bit of damage to Skarmory. Uh, at this point, I'm trying to think about who to go back in with. I figure I could try and farm all the way down with Gengar. I have a ton of energy already. But they brought in an Obstagoon. As is. So I figured that's probably their best. Or their only normal type. And um, I'm just going to try and get these Shadow Balls, or at least one Shadow Ball off on a Swampert. I don't want to be farmed all the way down, so I'm going to swap into my own... No, I'm not. I'm going to... So this is ideal. Getting CMP tied so that my Gengar goes down. There's no energy on the Swampert. That's great, too. Uh, my goal there was to swap into Swampert just so I wouldn't get farmed all the way down. And then their Swampert just throws... Uh, charge moves in and deletes my Swampert. So uh, actually, that's the last game of, um, of the set. Ended up 3 out of 5 as well. So I think I was up nearly 150 points no probably 125 points on the day um pretty solid climb um but then again it's ultra league so uh it can be can be pretty random uh but yeah so uh, this is this is the new team and probably the last team that i will be uh i'll showing in ultra league for sure uh but definitely tune in next week for some holiday cup i have some ideas for that that i'm very excited to to make some videos on so uh yeah i, I cannot wait uh that's gonna be awesome uh but yeah uh if you guys want to support me if you like this kind of videos feel free to visit my patreon in the uh, video description my discord is there as well as well as my twitch and my uh twitter to keep up to date with uh what i'm up to um but as always guys can be doing this without you have a happy holidays thanks for watching